So we have this pair of lamps that came from a well-known Swedish furniture store and meatball emporium, and I really hated the switches on them, so I decided I wanted to modify them to install this type of switch. Aside from the switches, the lamps themselves are great. I didn't think it'd be too hard to modify the lamps to put a switch into the base, which would make it easier to find in the dark. So this project started with a little disassembly. When I fully disassembled the base, I found that the nickel finish metal shell came off and underneath was this sort of weird weighted disc. I'm not entirely sure what it was made out of, but I think it was some kind of resin with metal flakes embedded into it because it is magnetic. The original configuration had the lamp cord coming out of the neck and I had to have it going down into the base so I'd be able to wire the switch there. So I removed this plastic fair lead, rerouted the cord, and then reinstalled the old fair lead so there wouldn't be such a big hole in the neck. Then I laid out where the holes were going to be in the shell of the base. I discovered when I modified the first lamp that the metal finish scratches pretty easily, so I put down a lot of extra masking tape to try to prevent that. The metal shell was pretty thin, so anytime I had to apply too much pressure to it, I put the weighted disc back underneath the metal shell. This way I'd have some support and not bend it. In addition to the hole for the switch, I also needed to drill a hole in the base for the cord to enter. I needed to drill holes through the outer shell and the inner disc, so I partially reassembled it so they would stay oriented properly. I put the pilot holes all the way through the outer shell and then partially into the inner disc so I would know exactly where to drill the bigger holes later. I used a drill press with the hole saw for the larger switch hole. And I actually neglected to get proper video of this, but I used a step drill to do the cord hole. And then with the inner disc complete, I turned my attention to the outer shell. The switch had an alignment key and two little prongs to keep it from falling out, so I needed to file keyways for these into the outer shell. The hole for the cord also needed to be widened to make room for a little plastic bushing that I 3D printed. The switch fit in really nice and snug. It didn't move around at all and definitely would be difficult to get out. I used some Starbond Thick with Accelerator to glue in the plastic grommet. I also used a little bit of the Starbond to lock out the extension neck on the lamp. We never used these and there's not going to be enough cord slack left in the lamp to be able to raise it up anyway. So with all those steps completed, I was able to reassemble the base for the last time. After feeding the plug wire in through the plastic grommet, I put a knot in it so it wouldn't be able to be pulled out. So something to think about even when doing a simple rewiring job like this is you don't want to mess up the polarity. So this is really hard to see on the clear cord that the lamps have, so I'm going to show on this white extension cord. There are two wires, one hot and one neutral, and we want our switch to be in line in the hot wire. The way to tell the difference is that the hot wire has a smooth outer insulation and the neutral wire has these little ridges on it. So ridges mean neutral and smooth means hot. So I twisted the neutral wires coming from the plug and the lamp socket together. I also tinned them, clipped them, and installed a wire nut. My switch came with these little leads that had connectors on them to be able to attach to the switch easier, so I twisted the wires together onto the hot wire, tinned them, and installed wire nuts. I also used some zip ties to hold the wires together so they couldn't be pulled apart. On top of wire nuts and solder, this was definitely overkill, but I did it anyway. Then I attached the leads to the switch. I'll note here that this switch and leads are rated for 120 VAC. Then I needed to do something about this rat nest. I designed a blanking cover in Shaper 3D on an iPad and then 3D printed it using a KeyDX Plus. 
I threw on a few more zip ties just to keep everything tidy while I glued on the blanking cover. I used some hot glue to secure the wire blanking cover. With this cover, everything became neat and tidy and the wires would never get snagged or chafe on anything. And then the moment of truth.